we've looked at um, sorry, uh, adding a modifier to the uh, simulation. Have I got these? I might have these as a live forever, and I might just turn off that point H, which is already off. Um, so I'm just going to have those doing their thing over time. Um, so we've got this. So they get a bit bluer, and they get smaller. Maybe they're getting too small too quickly. So I can either put that up to a slightly higher number, or I can just change that to 0.5, so it's twice as slow. And then they're not getting as slow. Yeah, they're living a bit longer. Um, I may do that, just so they don't get too small. Right, there we go. Um, so, well, actually, let's have a quick look at the graph as it stands. So, what have we done so far? We have um, delete that. We've got our input for our mesh. Um, I've set a color property there. Made it a float four. Varying that here, piping that into my source, just emitting out speed, live forever. Not using a collider, I could delete that. Probably not going to use a collider, but they work exactly the same as I've shown before. So get rid of that. Um, modifying the color over time, modifying the a the size over time. Um, the only thing I've done in between videos is I just added that file cache node, which. You know, you know, you know how to do now. Um, so let's have a look at some more influences and how we can make this particle system move about in a slightly more interesting way. So um, I'm going to make a turbulence. Let's do a fractal turbulence. Oh no, I'm going to do a turbulence influence. That's what I want. Um, Limited. Yes, and let's just plug that in. So now, when we hit play, you can see the starting to be influenced by this. It's all wafting around a bit. Um, it's got drag on it, so let's turn the drag off and then rewind that. Hit play. So. not really seeing it now, I've turned drag off. And this is one of the things which is a bit weird about um, drag in relation to these influences. And the same thing actually with the bifrost fluids when you use the drag on that. What it's actually doing is it's different to a drag influence. Let's do a drag influence here. So if I just turn that one off and and plug that in. So the drag's set to 5, let's just turn that off and play it. Oops, rewind it and play. So you can see they're all just moving out. I'll just, what I'll do is I'll crank these speeds up so we get a better idea of it. Let's do it at um, 5. Is that right? Yeah, so they're going to be quicker. Um, so, if I turn the drag on here, it does what we expect it to do, which is basically it slows it all down um, and just basically sucks out the velocity out of it over time. Um, so you can see I've got it quite high, so you can see like that. So what it's doing is over time it's just slowing it down, it's dragging it, it's like friction. But if I turn this off, And we go here, and we put that back to one. And it's sort of doing it in a similar way, but you can see the turbulence is still moving them around. They're slowing down. What the drag does here, if I crank it up to say 20 or 50, let's try that. 
you see they're still moving but they're, all their velocity is gone which we set up here it's just the turbulence um, so what's happening in drag in relation to inside here is that it's how quickly the velocity of the particle is taken over by the velocity of this turbulence and you can sort of see that there in, in this sort of thing um, and if you put it to zero you can see it's sort of not really affecting it anymore so you would think oh, if I turned the drag to zero actually it would be more turbulent but it's not because actually it's not moving the velocities over towards this turbulence that makes sense so, so if I put that to 5 I'm just going to put this down to frequency down a bit so we should get it into a bit more of a visual thing and let's crank this up I have to rewind that there we go so you can see it's the initial velocity is basically being taken over by this so and we're getting sort of tenderly particles zooming out through this velocity field um, this brings me on to there's a new aspect to all the Bifrost graph which came out in this version and this is this field system um, if I go to core Get all these fields down here um, and these are slightly complicated a bit more uh, you know technical aspects of things you can do in here but all the turbulence all the new modifiers in there are actually all made using these um, so all these fields in here um, I mentioned this because we're going to do a bit of fields in a minute Um, and I sort of wanted to just sort of vaguely introduce you to that aspect of it. Um, I haven't really introduced you to anything, but you can see inside. You can go into these now. Before you couldn't go inside them. I don't think, or if you did, it, they didn't make much sense. They just had loads of set properties. But now you can go inside them, and they are actually the correct structures of these. You could remake these yourself, um, and. Um, make your own sort of fields and so you basically now I've got the toolkit to make your own distortion fields and all sorts of things and it's pretty clever stuff it's all a little bit high-end math wise if you're not used to that but I'm not either but I've been playing around with it and that's how I've done these I've been using fields so I'm not using influences per se I'm using fields and then building them up um, and I hopefully we'll talk about that in a bit but Let's just go back to this. Anyway, so that's one of the important things to sort of know about uh, turbulence, uh, the influence thing here. This drag is how quickly it gets taken over by the. If I do that to 50 again, you'll see it's just going to be the turbulence field, which is almost the same as. Um, actually, let's put that back down to warp zero, say almost the same as getting rid of all speed here as you can see but what the difference is as well which is quite a good thing to sort of show up is that you can see they're not doing the same thing as when we crank up this to say 50 so what going on when you've got that at zero and you haven't got any speed on them is that you're applying these velocities to it and they're just shooting off they're inheriting those velocities and they're just going with them whereas when you crank this up to sort of 50 or so you can see they're in they are getting the velocities but they're not shooting off and that's because uh, the velocity is constantly being replaced by whatever is in the turbulence field so they're sort of staying more linked to that field. And as you can sort of see, you get more tenderly stuff. So I'll put it up to say 500. 
Look at it. Sort of similar thing with I think after after a limit sort of just there. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so what did I want to do about that? Let's do something else. Let's change the size of these to 0 0.5. Let's make them smaller, smaller. And let's crank this up to a thousand. Gonna go back to my turbulence. Let's do that two five. And I'm not gonna change the turbulence at all, I'm just gonna let it be static. So the turbulence field isn't changing over time anymore because I've changed the change rate to zero. And now you can see we're just they're just moving through that turbulence field without if you could visualize this turbulence field, you'd see it was just basically, you know, these are sort of empty areas and this is where the velocities are. Um, I have to turn that up to say 0 0.8. Let's try that. There we go. And you can sort of see they all follow the sort of similar paths. So you get some quite nice effects by just by using one. Let's turn that back to let me do fifty and five hundred. There we go. Um, if I select those, you can sort of see. Can you see it? If I pull back further away. It's a bit difficult to see, but they're basically for only following the same little paths and everything. Um, if I just do that to 0.4, maybe let's do that down to one. Maybe that will help. And if you uh, so, if I put that back down to 10, put that to 50, get that, and do that. You can see them going into the field. If you then so I've got the drag there that I had. If I turn on that drag, is that doing it? I think that 10. So I have to do 10. Yeah, you get. Um, Get some quite nice tenderly stuff going on. Um, you can sort of see that in there. Um, right, so just playing around with those influences. Um, this is what other influences we've we got. I haven't really been using a lot of influences lately. Uh, influence, buoyancy, gluant, dissipation, drag, gravity, anything else? Radial, I'm gonna make it was it around. Actually, let's try masking. That's gonna be right. Um, yeah, I'm not bothered that. Um, so I had a look at that. Um, and my drag, with my drag on, let's turn that back down to five. And let's crank up my change over time point size. Let's do it at point eight. With maybe rate of one. Playing around and seeing, let's get this one greener. Let's 
Yeah, so because they're getting smaller over time, you get some nice sort of little tendrily bits going on. Um, maybe I'll make that even quicker. Anyway, so just a quick look at influences and their relationship to drag. Uh, 